you're probably pretty familiar with the concept of averages. Maybe you've been thinking about whether your grade point average is high enough to get you into your number one college of choice. Whatever your GPA may be, your ACT score is a big factor. So let's focus on getting you a solid score on the test by getting you up to speed on problems involving averages. We'll also cover median and mode questions in this lesson. Let's start by going over how the average or the arithmetic mean of a data set will play out on the ACT. We can find the average of any data set by dividing the sum of all the numbers given by the number of numbers in the data set. The shorthand formula is A for average equals S for sum over T for terms. Let's take a look at one way averages might show up on the ACT. The average of five numbers is 12.4. The average of four of these numbers is 11. What is the value of the fifth number? Here are your answer choices, which represent the fifth number. As always, we'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Now, you may have noticed that we have two different averages being presented in our problem. That means that we're actually going to need to use the average equation twice. Let's start with the first sentence. The average of five numbers is 12.4. Now let's use our shorthand formula for averages. We know that A equals 12.4 and T equals 5. We're looking for one of the numbers, and to figure that out, we need to know the sum. If we plug into our average equation, 12.4 equals sum over 5, and if we solve for S by multiplying 12.4 by 5 in our calculator, we get a sum of 62. We still need to find the individual numbers, though. Let's go on to the second sentence. The average of four of these numbers is 11. Well, that means that A equals 11 and T equals 4. We're just missing S. So we'll use the formula A equals S over T and substitute 11 equals S over 4. Then we multiply both sides by 4 and we get that S equals 44. Let's take a second to think about what we know now. In the first part of the problem, we found that the sum of five numbers is 62 and that the sum of four of those numbers is 44. We can say that 44 plus our missing number x equals 62. Subtract 44 from both sides, we get that x equals 18, which is answer choice C. Another value that the ACT might ask you to find is the median. The median is another way of getting a zoomed out view of our data. It's literally our middle data point. To find the median of a list of numbers, simply list the numbers from least to greatest and then cross off numbers on either side until you get the middle value. So to find the median of the set 3, 5, 1, 7, and 6, we would line the numbers up in the order 1, 3, 5, 6, and 7, and then cross off the highest number, then the lowest, then the next highest, and then the next lowest, always in pairs, until we get to the middle number, which in this case is 5. One of the things to notice here is that we have the same amount of numbers on either side of our median. In this case, we have two numbers to the left of five and two numbers to the right of five. But what if we have an even number of numbers? Say, if our previous data set has a two in it as well. Well, we start off in the same way. We line all the numbers up in ascending order and cross off the highest and lowest in pairs. But when we get to the end, we don't have a pair to cross off. We just have three and five, and they can't both be the median. Luckily, there's a rule we can apply. When you have an even amount of numbers, the median will be the average of the two middle numbers. So we'll take the average by dividing s over t. 3 plus 5 over 2 is simplified to a equals 8 over 2, which is 4. So the median here is 4. Now, let's take a look at how finding the median shows up on the ACT. The median of the following data set is 2. Which of the following is a possible value of x? x, 2, 1, 6, and 7. a is 2, b is 3, c is 5, d is 6, and e is 8. As usual, we'll underline our facts, circle our keywords, and label our answer choices. As in any median problem, the first thing we need to do is line up our values. Leave x out for now. So when we line up our numbers, we get 1, 2, 6, and 7. According to the question, our median is 2. Since the median always has the same number of terms to the left and right of it, we know that x has to be two or less. If we look at our answer choices, we see that a is the only number that is two or less. So a is our answer. Another way you might be asked about the median is in the context of a histogram, which is a fancy name for a chart. 
Let's take a look at an example of a histogram and an accompanying question. What is the median number of pets per student's household as shown in this chart? We could list out every single person who said they had two, three, or four pets in a row and cross out our pairs, but that would take a really long time, and there's an easier way to do this by using the chart. So since we have 10 students who have two pets and 10 students who have four pets, those make 10 pairs. Cross them all out. We're left with our median. All the rest of the students have three pets, so the median value is three pets per household. The last thing you might be asked to find on the ACT is the mode of a set of numbers. You French buffs might notice that it's really similar to the French word for in fashion. You can almost think of it as a number that's just that, in fashion. Mode is the number that occurs most in a set of numbers. Now let's try a mode question from the ACT. What is the mode of the following set of numbers? 47, 89, 75, 77, 56, 89, 46, 89, and 72. A is 47, B is 56, C is 71, D is 75, and E is 89. First, we'll underline the facts, circle the keywords, and label the answer choices. Next, we should take note of any numbers that are repeated, starting with our answer choices. 47 only appears once, as does 56, 71 isn't even in the set, and 75 is only once. The only one that is repeated is 89, and since 89 occurs three times and the other numbers all only occur once, 89 is our mode, choice E. Now that you know how to find the average, median, and mode of any data set, you can use it in all sorts of ways. You can find out the average amount of rainy days you have in a given month, or the median height of your friends, or the mode of how many of each colored shirt you have. Now that you've learned about average, median, and mode, make sure you solve some of the many practice problems available throughout this course.